Welcome back. This is EC253C microprocessors and microcontrollers, and this will be lecture 14. Today, uh, we'll be discussing looping and branch instruction in AVR mi microcontrollers, particularly at Mega328 microcontroller. So, as m you may have seen so far, that when we write an assembly language program, it consists of it consists of assembly language instructions. And then the program is changed into a hex file by the assembler and these opcodes of each instruction opcodes of each instruction opcode 1 opcode 2 of each instruction are actually burned inside the program ROM of AVR microcontroller and when we power up the microcontroller these opcodes are fetched by the processor one by one and executed inside the instruction the sequence of execution uh, these instructions are in fact executed sequentially but in some cases we in some cases it's often necessary to transfer program control to a different location to transfer the program control out of the sequence so there are many instructions avia to achieve this we have jumps which are used uh, to repeat a set of instructions more than once and we also have call instructions which are used to actually uh, to actually call subroutines which are written somewhere else first we'll be jumping branches and how uh, we do looping in avr microcontrollers and then in next lecture we'll be jam we'll be discussing about uh, call and the related things uh, like subroutines etc so looping in a looping what what do i mean by looping repeating a sequence of instructions or an uh, or maybe an operation maybe addition maybe maybe a particular instruction more than once or a certain number of times it's called a loop when we repeat maybe two maybe three or maybe one instruction more than once and how we uh, implement these uh, this looping in assembly language programming is using branch instructions or using jump instructions jumps as we have discussed earlier may be conditional or may be unconditional conditional jumps check some condition before jumping to a particular location if that condition is met it will uh, the sequence of the program execution will jump to a particular instruction if the condition is not met this uh, next instruction in the sequence will be executed so in 808 in uh, as you ha as you have seen in 8085 microprocessor these jumps the conditional jumps used to check the condition of the status register similar is the case with avr microcontrollers in conditional jumps the status of various flags inside the status register is checked let me give an example we have a conditional jump instruction the mnemonic is b r n e full form is branch if not equal if not equal b from branch b and r from branch n from not and e for equal branch if not equal what does this instruction do for example i have a program like this maybe i have an instruction 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 three instruction i start my program here and then i have this branch instruction b r n e branch if not equal and then i have some address maybe x y z some label here this label will be pointing to some instruction maybe this instruction so what is this instruction branch that it will branch actually jump to xyz if not equal what not equal it will actually check if z equals to zero z is the zero flag inside the status register that means whenever this instruction is enco encountered by our processor it is executed by the processor it will check the status of zero flag inside the status register of avr microcontroller and if the zero flag is 
equal to zero that means in the preceding instruction in the pre preceding arithmetic instruction the result of that instruction was zero this zero flag will be uh, set and if this zero flag is set it won't branch to x y z but if the zero flag is equal to zero it will branch to the label x y z for example if i have a program i will give an example that will explain it more for example we have a program write a program we have to write an assembly language program write an assembly language program that will clear the contents of R17 R17 is a general purpose register that will clear the contents of R17 and then add number 5 to R17 10 times so we have to write a program first we have to clear the contents of R17 that we have to put a 0 in R17 and then we have to add 5 10 times to this register R17 and then store the sum in data RAM maybe in the memory location 0 100 memory location. so how we will do it if we are using this branch if not equal to in instruction first of all we have to decide a register any general purpose register that will act as a counter that will count in this case since we need to do a particular job 10 number of times that counter should be loaded with value 10 and then after the execution of addition once this counter should be decremented and the same thing should be repeated 10 number of times so first of all let me choose a register a general purpose register that will act as counter maybe r18 so first of all i will load a value 10 because i have to repeat a particular number of instruction 10 times so i will load r18 with 10 r18 will act as counter then what was the first thing i have to do i have to clear the contents of r17 so i can write ldi R seventeen zero. Okay. You should remember that instead of writing LDI R eighteen ten, I could have written LDI R eighteen zero X ten in hex. That is a. It's a similar thing. Same thing will happen in both the cases. Number ten will be loaded to R eighteen, and in this case, zero will be loaded to. R17. Similarly, I can I could have written here LDI R170 0 x 0. 0 is same in hex and decimal. And then I have to add number. I have to add number three, number five to R17 10 number of times. So I will put this five in maybe some other register, maybe in LDI R19. So I have something like this. I have register R17, I have R18, I have R19. So R17 gets 0, R18 gets 10 and it will act as counter. R19 gets 5. Now I will start adding. Add. Add. I have to add number 5 that is the contents of R19 to R17 10 number of times. I will do it once and then repeat it 10 times R17 R19. 
so this instruction will add the contents of r19 that is file to the contents of r17 and store the result in r17 so far so good and after that i i have to repeat this instruction 10 number of times so and i use r18 as my counter so I will decrement R18 and the next instruction will be branch if not equal to that is branch if zero flag is not set branch to where to this add instruction I will label this XYZ XYZ so this instruction will load 10 in R18 this instruction will load 0 in R17. This instruction will load 5 in R19. This instruction will add the contents of 19 and 17 and save the result in R17. That means I will get a 5 here. And after that, R18 will be decremented. It will be 9. When this instruction will be executed, each instruction, when each instruction will be executed, the flags of the status, status register will be changed accordingly. But, and then when this instruction will be executed, the status register flags will be changed accordingly. I am decrementing R18. R18 is becoming 9 from 10. So a particular flag that is 0 register will not be set. That means 0 flag will still have a one va a 0 value. It won't it won't be set because the last instruction executed didn't give us uh, didn't give us a zero as a result so when this instruction will be executed it will check branch if not equal to that means branch if zero flag is not set zero flag is not set so it will branch to this instruction and execute this instruction again as in this instruction again will add the contents of r19 that is 5 to the contents of r17 to 5 and it will be 10 and after that this instruction will be executed again it will have 8 again 0 flag is not set so again it will jump to this instruction again it will be added the contents of r19 will be added to the contents of r17 and the result is stored in r17 so r17 will get 15 and again R18 will be decremented and this process will repeat until we have a 1 in R18 we might have some value maybe uh, 45 here in R17 and R19 still has a 5 zero flag is still 0 and after that when this instruction will be executed at it will get a 50 and then when R18 will be decremented from 1 decrementing it it will get to 0 and when this thing will happen r18 gets a zero zero flag inside the stage register will be set and when this instruction is executed next it will check if the zero flag is set it will jump only when the zero flag is not set but this time zero flag is set so it won't jump but it will execute the so the processor will execute the next instruction in the cycle what should be the next instruction storing the sum in memory location 0 100 how we do that sts 0 cross 100 where was the sum in r17 r17 so this is our program we did something we added r17 to r19 r19 to r17 that is 5 to r17 number 5 to r17 10 number of times using a branch instruction and that branch instruction was a conditional branch and it checked the contents of it checked the contents of the state register a particular flag that is the zero flag similarly we have other uh, branches also we have branches that check whether the uh, whether there's an overflow whether there's a carry i won't go into details of each branch but there is a corresponding a corresponding branch instruction uh, pertaining to every uh, every um, pertaining to every uh, uh, flag inside the status register so using these branch instructions we can repeat a set of instruction multiple number of times but what is the limit 
what's the maximum number of times an in a set of instructions can be repeated using jump using these branch instructions the limit is since our registers are because registers act as counters since our registers are only 8 bit wide the maximum number they can hold the maximum number our counters can hold is 255 so we can repeat a set of instructions a maximum of 255 times and if we want to repeat it more than 255 times we have to use something known as nested loops that's loops inside loops you might have studied this thing in your C programming also for example in the same program maybe I need to add a particular number 5 or number 2 to to some register or 17 400 times so what should I do I can't implement this thing using only one counter because my counter uh, my counters my registers general purpose registers act as counters and the general purpose registers are maximum 8 bits wide and can hold a maximum value of 255 so I use nested loops how do we use nested loops for example in this program what I will be doing I can repeat the same program I will use two different counters one counter may have a value 10 and another counter may have a value 40 the multiplication should be equal to the final value so that a particular loop is run inside the outer loop and the total number of times it will run is this multiplied by this let me show this using an example First of all, I will clear LDIR17, I will put a 0 here, then I will put these two values, then these can be any two values, just the multiplication should be equal to the total number of times I have to repeat the instruction. LDI, maybe I am using register 18, I am putting 10, LDI 19, I am putting a 40 here. and then for example what i have to do i'm putting this number two in some um, other register or 20 will get number two then i will add the contents of r20 to r17 and store the result r7 but this i have to do 400 number of times so after that i will be decrementing I will be uh, decrementing R21 or 21st and then I will be jumping B R N E to A B C B R N E to sorry B R N E to A B C A B C will be here then I will be also decrementing R19 here I will be decrementing R18 sorry and here I have to add the contents of R20 to R17 and store the result in R70 because R20 contains 2 and I have to add 2 400 number of times to R17 decrementing R19 and branch if not equal to XYZ another label and that I will put here XYZ so after that I will my uh, sum other things if I have to write so what will this program do this will involve four registers I have R17 R18 R19 R20 so R17 will have a 0 or 18 will have a 10 or 19 will have a 40 or 20 will have a 22 
this x y z should be here okay fine so uh, what will happen the first time these four inner string will get executed and then the contents of r20-2 will be get uh, will get added to the contents of r17 the result will be stored in r17 so r17 will get a 2 r18 will be decremented it will become 9 and branch if not equal to abc if the last instruction will produce a 0 it won't branch but if it uh, if the result was a non zero as was the case it will jump to abc and execute this instruction again so this will become 4 after that this will become 8 and this process will continue up till this becomes 0 and this uh, when this becomes 0 2 would have been added to R17 10 number of times that means we will have a 20 here fine and at that time since the previous instruction produced a 0 it won't branch to ABC but the next instruction will be executed that it R19 will be decremented R19 will become 39 now so R19 will become 39 and after that again the 0 flag will be checked but this time the zero flag will reflect the contents uh, will reflect the result of this operation and this operation had a non zero value that means zero flag would not be set and if the zero flag will not be set this will jump to xyz jumping to the xyz means r19 will be loaded again sorry there's a small mistake r19 should be here with 40 and r18 should be here with 10 so R18 will be loaded again with 10. R18 will be loaded again with 10. And when R18 will be loaded again with 10, R20 will be loaded again with 2. That's not necessary because it already had 2. And then R17 will again, uh, R20, that, that's number 2, will again be added to the contents of R17 and the result stored in R17. That means R17 will become 22. And the process will repeat 10 more number of times until it reached to 0 by then r17 will have 40 that means 2 would have got added to r17 2 into 10 that means 20 number of times and then again r19 will get decremented it will get 38 and again the process will repeat r18 will get 10 and again 10 number of times 2 will be added to r17 and the process will repeat how many number of times this 40 40 40 into 10 number of times that is 400 number of times this is how loop inside a loop is implemented we can have two loops inside another loop we can have loops loop inside a loop inside a loop and in uh, by that we can implement we can repeat some instructions a large number of times maybe hundred thousand times we have to repeat an instruction we can implement that using loop inside a loop inside a loop we can use three different loops and in that case we also have to use three different three different uh, general purpose registers as pointers as counters sorry these are conditional jumps as i already told you there are other conditional jumps that check other states uh, other flag registers for example there's a conditional jump brlo that checks that branch only if carry equal to one we have brsh that branch if carry equal to zero similarly we have conditional jumps for checking negative flag and for checking overflow flag so basically we have eight conditional jumps two each for carry zero negative and overflow flag you can check the details in the book apart from conditional jumps we also have unconditional jumps one more thing you should remember here all these all these conditional jumps These are short jumps. These are short jumps. Short jump in the sense each opcode of these conditional jumps takes only two bytes. That means these instructions, these conditional jumps, 
branch equal br any other things other jumps there are only two byte instructions and in these two byte instructions in these two bytes the first nine bits nine bits they are used for opcode and the remaining seven bits all contain the relay to address relay to address i will be discussing what this relay to address uh, means in a bit since seven bits so maybe i have a program i have some instructions and somewhere i have a jump maybe this jump br any we have discussed so far to a location x y z and then we have some more instructions the first thing you should remember this x y z can be an instruction before this jump instruction before this branch instruction or it can be after this branch instruction and this x y z the assembler changes this x y z into an address into an address we use labels to make life easy for a programmer we can also use addresses but then we have to calculate the address of that particular uh, instruction and that's not easy so we use a label but our assembler converts this label into an address and this address can only be seven bits long because our the total instruction pertaining to this branch or other branches is only 16 bits wide and 9 bits are used for opcode and only 7 bits are used for relay to address and since the jump can be forwards or can be backwards so this address can be negative or positive that means out of these 7 bits 1 bit is used for sign that leaves us with 6 bits That means the address can be 2 raised power 16 up to 64 plus or minus. Now what do we mean by relate to address? When the jump is executed by the processor, how it calculates the jump address? It adds this number, the number in these 6 registers or subtracts depending upon this uh, sign. It adds or subtracts this value to the present present value of the program counter so if the jump is if if i have to jump to an instruction which is after uh, this particular instruction the number in these six, six bits is added to the program counter and the address of the jump is calculated and if i have to jump backwards as we have seen in the programs in the examples we did this number is subtracted from the present program counter value and uh, program counter is actually loaded with that value that means uh, in fact that is the jumping program counter is forcibly loaded with some value how is that value calculated that value is calculated using these six bits of the branch in a section and if the sign bit is positive we have to do a forward jump if the sign bit is negative we have to do a uh, reverse jump so short jump so these jumps are known as short jumps because they can't jump to any uh, memory location inside the program ROM but they can jump within 64 bytes within 64 bytes of the program counter the present value of the program counter relate to the program counter and to calculate the target address the relate to address that is the address have uh, contain uh, contained in these 64 uh, in these six bytes is added to the program counter of the next instruction that is target address what is the target address of the jump it will be equal to relate to address given in these six bytes plus or seven bytes plus program counter so the bra jump should actually be the instruction to which we are jumping should be in close proximity of the jump instruction the instruction to which we are jumping should be in close proximity that means should be within 64 bytes of the instruction we are jumping from i think that's it the next topic is unconditional branch or unconditional jumps
we have unconditional branch instruction unconditional branch is a type of jump in which control is transferred to the label or to a particular instruction unconditionally that's the control is transferred to the target location unconditionally without checking any conditions in avr microcontrollers we have three unconditional jumps we have jmp jump and then we have rjmp we have jump jmp we have this known as jump simple jump and then we have rjmp relative jump and we have one more thing that's known as i jump or indirect jump First of all, we will be discussing jump. Jump, it's a four byte instruction. You should remember that. One of the very few instruction in uh, AVR microcontrollers which are not two bytes, uh, which don't take, uh, which don't uh, need two bytes, which need four bytes for storage. Uh, so it's a four byte, that's 32 bit instruction. And in these 32 bits, the first 10 bits are used as opcode and the 22 bits are used as an address address wire to jump so address can be anywhere in 2 bits for 22 that is 4 megabytes because as I have told you already, some of the AVR microcontrollers, they have uh, uh, up to 4 megabytes of ROM space. So, 22 bits are here used for the address. And address can be up to 4 megabytes. So, this jump, simple jump, it can actually jump to any location inside the... 4 megabytes 4 megabyte rom space of avr but as you know all the avr microcontrollers like, like our 8 mega 3 to 8 uh, all micro uh, avr microcontrollers don't have f uh, 4 megabytes of memory most of them have somewhere between 16 32 64 kilobytes of memory so in some cases we use just to save the rom memory because it will take uh, our uh, 4 bytes in some cases, we use R jump, relative jump. And in case of uh, one thing I have to discuss here more, in case of jump, we simply give an address here, jump address, or maybe a label. Label is also an address. So whenever this jump is executed by the processor, what actually happens, this address is forcibly put into program counter so that the next instruction that is executed pertains to this address. It's a bit different than was the case with uh, conditional jumps, where this address was actually added or subtracted to the contents of program counter and the result is stored in program counter so that the next instruction to be executed will be that particular instruction. But here, this address, so this address is not related; it is absolute is loaded is itself loaded in program counter now we have r jump r jump is again relative jump and it's only two bytes of instruction it only takes two bytes of memory and in those two bytes that means 16 bits four bits are used for opcode and the remaining 12 bits are used for address so again, 
the address can range from 2 raised power 12 that means 4 uh, kilobytes that means the relative address range of our jump is from 000 up to ff f, f, because this is the highest number we can get in 12 bytes and again it is divided into forward and backward jumps that's uh, that means we can have uh, in 2 raised power 11 only 2048 minus 2047 plus that means using our jump we can jump anywhere between minus 2048 to 2047 memory location This minus 2048 is actually related to the present contents of the uh, program counter. The contents of the program counter, uh, when the jump in a section, when the R jump in a section is executed, so either it can um, it can get an address that's uh, that is subtracted from the present contents of program counter, or it can get an address that uh, that's achieved by adding a particular value up to 2047 to the present contents of program counter. You should remember that this is a 2 byte instruction in most cases it is preferred over JMP because it takes less ROM space. The only constraint is that we can't go anywhere uh, inside, inside the program ROM of uh, AVR microcontroller but we have to limit ourselves to minus 2048 to 2047 memory, uh, memories related to the address of the current program counter. And then we have IJump AJMP. It's again two byte instruction. To understand I jump, we have to discuss a special re function register inside the AVR that is known as Z register. It's an eight bit value, eight bit register, and can store any value up to 255 sorry this is a 16 bit register so it can store any value from 00 up to 0000 up to f, 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 f. so what's the use of this z register when this instruction when this i jump instruction executes when the intersection the program counter is loaded with the contents of this z register that means jump that means we have to jump to this z register so in i jump we don't have any value we don't have any address uh, where to uh, where where to we have to jump in case of uh, conditional jumps you may have seen that we had a label inside the instruction where we had to jump also in case of r jump and jump we had an address or a label why do we have to jump but in case of i jump we don't have any uh, label or any in or any address written inside the inside the instruction but whenever i jump is executed by the processor it jumps to a value that is hold by this z register and this register is a two byte register so i jump can actually jump any wire in 2 raised power 16 that's 64 kilobytes of the program memory in the other jump instruction the uh, r jump and jump the target address was a kind uh, was something uh, what we can call static it was written it could not have been changed during the execution of the program but i jump has a dynamic target point that means we can dynamically change the target address by changing the z, z register contents during the execution of the program we can't change the we can't change what is written in the in an instruction during the execution of the program so the jump address of r jump or jump is static it's already loaded but in case of i jump we have a dynamic address the address can be changed inside uh, during the execution of the program uh, because the address is actually in z register and we can 
load z register with any value so i think that was about conditional and unconditional branches and jumps and how loops are run inside in avr microcontrollers in next lecture we will be discussing about call instruction and some more things related to calls thank you